guys and welcome back to my channel. So I'm here at BGS with Dr. Kevin Page and we're doing the second part to the video about the Cardioceros. Did I say that right? You did say that Cardioceros right. Cardioceros scarbagensi. So I prepped this two weeks ago, so I'll link that down below if you guys missed that. And today we're going to be trying to identify what creature potentially bit this ammonite because there are two puncture wounds on the top. So I will bring you guys closer so you can have a proper look at the ammonite and we're going to get Kevin's input mm. as well on which of these teeth could be the culprits. Mm. So um, yeah, let's get to it. Well, this is, this is the ammonite species Scardiosus scarbagensi, which, which is an indicator of the base of the, the upper Jurassic. And this, this is actually uh, a female ammonite and a male ammonite. And that's how they would have looked swimming along with tentacles coming out here. The females were larger than the males because they produce very large eggs like modern nautilus. So this does look like a modern nautilus. But when you see the male, it's quite different. And this is like a, a unique specimen. I've never found anything like this before because it has these puncture marks which, which Emma has, has been talking about. And I've showed it to a number of Ammonite Specialist colleagues and we all agree these, these are actually puncture marks. The shell actually sp is split at these points and the shell is actually bends into the hole here. So something has definitely uh, attacked this and made these holes. It's not just some accident after death, something happened to it. These are actually something happened to this animal probably when it was still alive. One of the key things about these puncture marks is we have the two here, but if we look next to them, we can see these cracks that have come from them, which means we know that they got pushed inwards and there was that stress there in the shell. So we can see that it was definitely something that kind of had a lot of pressure rather than something that bored into the shell. Because I know a few of you thought maybe a boring creature could have done these and it just so happened there was two holes, but I think it was definitely done by some big teeth. So now we're gonna look at the teeth and see what caused these. These are the first drawers we're looking at. And now these are all to do with ichthyosaurs. So they're all different components of jaws. So we've got the complete jaws here of both juveniles and adults. And then we also have the different teeth over here. So the sizes range quite a lot. So Kevin's going to show you some of the pieces now and we can discuss them a bit further. Yeah, I mean, nice to actually look at a, a, a beautiful chunk of ichthyosaur jaw and you can see there's lots and lots of teeth all in a row, little, little sort of peg-shaped teeth. And when one actually looks at the teeth themselves, it's a nice box here. Look at that. Quite short and stumpy, and they've actually got a sort of slightly sort of like compressed cross section. They're certainly not round in this particular case. And rows and rows of them. So that's is are the teeth marks like this? It's uh, something we can come back to. But that's so that's an ichthyosaur tooth. Lots and lots of teeth in a jaw, and they're not actually round in cross section. Just going back to this ichthyosaur skull here, you can see that the shape of it, that these marine reptiles almost resembled kind of crocodile dolphins of the Jurassic Seas. So they would have been quite scary looking creatures. Like this is quite a long nose on these. So just to try and reconstruct and visualize what these creatures look like, just think of a mix between a crocodile and a dolphin. And I don't think any of us would have liked to meet that in the ocean. <laughs> the next uh, large creature that was around at the time was crocodiles. Now these are some of the earliest crocodiles and we can see part of the jaw here with some of the teeth preserved. So potentially this could have bit our ammonite. Do you think this could have done it, Kevin? I don't know. If you look at this one, I mean, these are a particular special sort of, of, of crocodile. They're actually marine crocodiles. They're, instead of having normal claws on their feet, they had paddles. So they were out at sea. But if you look here, again, they're quite, it's a row of quite closely spaced, but peg-like teeth, and they're not actually very large. So, okay, maybe this is a, a young individual, but even so, it's not, it's not looking quite right. So the next groups of teeth we're going to look at are the pterosaurs and some large marine fish. Now these were suggested as potential culprits of biting the ammonite. The pterosaur was quite a cool idea that, you know, maybe it swooped down and it caught this ammonite and somehow did the damage. But I think looking at the teeth, they're kind of on the small side. And I think because they were flying creatures, they couldn't have had teeth large enough to do the damage that is required for this ammonite. But we'll go into more detail a bit later. And then these fish ones look rather small, I think. So um, again, the right shape, but doesn't quite look mm. like 
potential candidates. Then the final group of teeth we're looking at is the pliosaurs and plesiosaurs. Now this is a lovely replica of what the teeth would have been like. So you can see that they're kind of gradual, so they're cylinder-like and they just kind of get larger as you go up. So that's what these ones look like and they do vary in size. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to sit down with Kevin and we're going to discuss all the teeth side by side and do a bit of comparison and comparing and see who bit the ammonite. Okay, so we've laid out all the teeth that we've just looked at and we're gonna do a bit of analyzing them now on like the shapes because we know that the size of the creatures varied quite a lot between mm. like juveniles and adults, but the actual shape of the tooth can tell us whether it was capable of kind of puncturing our ammonite over here. And I'm definitely playing for team plesiosaur <laughs> um, because I am wearing the right t-shirt, but we're gonna have a look now and Kevin's going to talk us through the final selection. I think if we start at the, the, the end with the smaller ones, be, um, because they are quite a lot smaller than whole. So the fish teeth we have here, they're small and pointed. And okay, that's pointed enough to go straight into the shell and make a hole, but it's not going to make a hole of that size. And this particular time in the Jurassic, there weren't really many fish around with large teeth and, and that sort of size. So it's very unlikely it was a fish. This beautiful piece of, of, of uh, pterosaur jaw is, is, is really wonderful. And these things are extremely rare because they had, they had hollow bones so they could fly like modern birds. And if, if a pterosaur had teeth that size, it probably wouldn't have been able to fly. So it's, it's unlikely it was probably a pterosaur. The ichthyosaur teeth we looked at, uh, they have this very typical sort of cross section with, with sharp edges and things. And these, these, are, these are round teeth. These are peg-like. They, they, they haven't got the right shape. And also because the, the ichthyosaur teeth were so close together in the jaw, it, it's, it, one would probably see a lot more holes across mm -hmm. there than that. That looks like there's a bit more space in there than we might expect from the skulls we've seen. So that really lives, leaves us with the plesiosaurs and the pleosaurs. They're closely related, essentially, like an MS t-shirt, the, the plesiosaurs had the long neck and, and pleosaurs are very similar. They had a, a short neck and a huge big skull. And you can see, you can imagine with a, with a tooth like that, how big it was. But if you look at the cross section here, that's actually round and it's actually round like these holes here. So it could definitely have done the puncture. And the plesiosaur as well, but they're smaller because it had a long neck. So there's two good candidates here between a plesiosaur with a round shaped tooth and a pleosaur with a round shaped tooth. So it's really who is most likely to have actually been able to grab this ammonite. And because they're so sharp, uh, it could have just snapped its jaw, it could have gone into the shell and not necessarily punched the other side. It was probably fast enough, strong enough to actually do that without mm -hmm. leaving an imprint on the other side. But the question is, which one? Definitely. It is remarkable, isn't it, that the shell didn't encounter any further damage. Yeah. It's, it's not crushed at all, you know. It's, uh, these uh, type of ammonites, they're very chunky anyway, and they're quite globular. And for it to not have affected, you know, the shell's yeah. integrity is quite amazing, actually. But you do have the fracture line, so something sharp managed to just literally cut through it. And I, th I think probably it was really, like, snapped at it. A jaw closing quickly, yeah. or just catching it, would be enough to... To, to a slight sort of pen, perforate it on one yeah. side and you wouldn't actually have to have squeeze, squeeze it between the jaws to actually actually, actually do the damage so that would be an explanation why there aren't teeth marks on the other side. And another common question we had is was it a fatal injury? Almost certainly, almost certainly. The curious thing is though uh, a big animal like this I mean after it caught it did it actually eat the animal because to get the animal out, it probably would have had to crush the shell. Yeah. Because the automatic reaction of the animal would be to withdraw into the shell because it's being attacked. Hmm. So it might have been playing. Maybe they hunted it for sport, yeah. Exactly. It was a, a game. <laughs> Definitely. Well, thank you very much.
So that's all we've got for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed this video with Kevin here. We had a lot of fun making it. And if you'd like to see more episodes like this in the future, comment down below what you'd like to see and I'm sure it can be arranged. And a huge thank you to BGS who allowed us to have access to all the specimens here today and share with you guys all about these different remarkable creatures that existed during the Jurassic period. So thank you again for watching. Like and subscribe for more and hopefully I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.